Well, hello again. This is the second of three parts that are going to be devoted to the, the decks of the Prince Eugen. I had, in my naivety, hoped that we would get the decks completed in one episode, but that's just not going to happen. It's going to take at least three. So, in this part, we're going to deal with the painting of the deck. The last part we looked at repairing the deck, um, but this one is going to be painting. We're going to cover it first of all with a primer coat. It's been masked, so the primer will only affect those areas that will appear um, above the wooden decks. And then we're going to put the final colour onto these parts before we unmask it. We'll then unmask it and have a look and see how we've done. The masking is fairly complicated and we're going to use two different masking processes. The first one will be Tamiya's masking tape and the second one will be Humbrol's mask all, which we'll need to use because of the awkwardness of one particular position on the deck. And the final episode of the three will be putting Artwalk's wooden decks on. Um, I'm looking forward to that third section because uh, as I say, I've used Art Walks wooden decks before and I like them. Um, but for this part two, we're going to deal with the painting. So let's get on with it just now. Right, well here we have the main section of the, the deck, um, which we have masked, or I have masked. Uh, I've masked it off completely except for one small section which we'll look at just in a moment, but the all three sections of the deck have now been masked in Tamiya's masking tape and I've used both 10mm uh, tape and 3mm tape. So I'm hoping that we're now ready to paint. There is one small exception and uh, that's right up at the front of the main deck because it really is very complicated to try and get masking tape in there uh, in between the support struts of the breakwater. And so I had a bit of think about that and I decided that what I was going to do is I was going to use masking fluid and paintbrush and paint it in. And here we have the masking fluid. This is Humbrol's mask all. I've used it before. I've in fact done an entire deck masking in Humbrol uh, in a previous occasion, but um, in this case we're only going to need it for a little part. So uh, we're going to paint this stuff on. So we'll just get a little bit into uh, one of my trays. Oh, that's probably too much. It is too much. It's far too much. Uh, Humbrol Maskol is a kind of liquid rubber and when you uh, paint it into the parts that you want to mask it's very very fluid and you don't really paint it as such you more just sort of dab it down so let's get started on this um, this is a paintbrush that I bought uh, from an artist suppliers which was recommended for use with Windsor and Newton's masking fluid. It's uh, it's not really a hairbrush. It's like thin strands of of plastic. These th these masking fluids can really destroy brushes um, because they, as I say, it dries into a rubberish material, and unless you get it all off, and it's quite a job to get it off a hairbrush. Um, then it really can destroy the brush. But these are brushes that were specifically designed to work with um, with masking fluid, and I find that uh, at least I can restore them afterwards. But let's just try and get it. You don't really paint it on, you, you dab it on. And you can actually dab quite a dollop of it on, because it goes on very, very fluid and flattens out onto the surface that you're dabbing it onto, um, which means that if there's bits sticking up that you don't want to mask, it actually works very well for them. And because we've got all these wee supporting struts 
as you remember there was eight on one side and nine on the other um, just dabbing this stuff on means that it tends to settle down onto the deck and leave the struts unmasked and that's exactly what we're looking for so we'll just try a wee bit in the front of that I don't know what that thing is at the front there I haven't found out yet but we'll just dab round it once I've got this part masked in humbrol I'll have a look over the rest of the decks and see if there's any wee tiny bits that we've missed because humbrol is also very good for filling in wee tiny gaps uh, that you might have left between strands of masking tape and also where you're you're um, going round a circular object like for example the the barbette just behind my, my brush there um, going round that with straight tape can sometimes leave wee gaps <coughs> excuse me so we'll just have a wee look round and check that there's there's nothing else to be done uh, on this deck I suspect that's okay now we'll have a look at the, the quarter deck again we're just looking for tiny wee gaps between bits of masking tape and I think there's one yeah just spot that out while I'm looking at it I'd go through a tremendous amount of masking tape I used masking tape for all sorts of things it was never intended for a wee dab in there it's very good for lifting dust off my black velvet background that I'm working on here so I just dab the tape down and pull it up and it lifts all the dust up as well let's see if we can't get these wee these wee gaps that have been left filled up when we take the masking tape off it'll bring off the 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 rubber the set rubber mask all as well just a wee bit round there I think that's us getting really now towards the stage where we can go and, and paint this um, the first thing that will go on is uh, the primer and I've got big spray cans of this stuff and I haven't got a, a, a spray booth so I have to go outside to do that so we'll just get this brush cleaned off if you give it a, 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 a swirl through in water while the humbrol fluid is still fluid um, it, it can help in cleaning it off and then I'll just get a, a, a pad of tissue or something and dab it dry in that and try and clean it off properly um, I'll leave it sitting in the water and I'll attend to it later when I'm looking to clean several brushes but uh, once I've done the, 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 uh, the primer I'll then airbrush uh, the lightest of the hull greys onto the surface and um, that will have us then got the deck basically painted. Well, hello again. Now, we've now finished with the, print, the main painting of the decks. And it might just be worth recapping on what we've done so far. The decks have been masked and the masking has done has covered everything with the exception of some of the center which is irrelevant anyway because that will be built on top of and bollards for the cables to go through mountings for torpedo tubes and uh, and guns and if you look here we've got the barbettes for the heavy artillery on these parts and also sticking through and you can see it basically on this one of the quarter deck we've got various hatches covers uh, there's a steel part there where the rear anchor chain goes through uh, another part of a barbette and some ready use ammunition boxes um, but these have all been left uncovered on the bow section there's a small part there where the nose anchor goes there's the anchor eyes there a couple of um, there's a, a box there which I think is I don't know what that's a hatch of some sort and then there are some bollards and uh, that's what all that's been left of the masking 
I then sprayed over it, over all the decks with uh, with uh, a primer. We then airbrushed over all, everything um, with the light grey, um, with the exception of the bollards which are black. And I've gone over these with a brush and just brush painted them black. And now it's time to remove the masking tape. We'll start off with a small one. Um, some of the masking you can see at the back, so we'll just get the, the pointer underneath it and lift it up. You'll notice that I'm wearing gloves again because we're now coming into the stage where we really want to make sure before we paint over these decks with um, varnish that we don't touch the decks again and indeed I've made sure that we didn't touch the decks after we've given them a wash um, and before we primed them Okay, so that's that all loose, and we'll now come to the front, and ease that away. Just remove the last remnants of the masking tape. If we can, sticking to everything. Now, with this particular deck here, the only parts that were, were getting paint were right up in the, in the bow of the ship, the eyes for the anchors here, that small uh, hatch there, two side bollards and a set of bollards in the centre, and two small round openings in the deck which the chain, the anchor chain will go around. The anchor chain will run along here, round the capstan which will go there and disappear down into the chain locker through these access points there. And that's the only parts of this deck that actually received any grey paint. And it can be seen from that that the grey colour that we've ended up with is very, very similar to the mould colour of the of the polystyrene. This will show up better on some of the other bits that we use, so that's it removed from there. Next section, slightly larger, is the quarter deck. And there's larger areas of this that have been left clear. So let's get the tape off here. This tape is actually quite a neat fit on it this time. Whenever I put it on, I was more or less able to get it right up to the edges without too much overlap onto the back. And you can see that, that I'm not really having to remove too much tape from the back at all. Just clear that and free it up. It's a fiddly nuisance having to work in black in the surgeon's gloves, but it does prevent any grease from my hands or fingerprints getting onto the surfaces, which is the whole intention. <sighs> okay. Now, let's see if we can see this. This is the original clear, the original grey colour of the moulding. And that I think will need blown off 
and uh, take all there's a lot of dust on it which will need to come off now and then we've got these various hatches and boxes which are uh, the lighter of the greys that are on the upper hull and then with one two three four sets of bollards which have been picked out in black I may with a very fine brush go over these later towards the end of the build and put a little more black paint on them because they seem to be a bit short at the moment and then with the area here with the rear anchor chain which comes along from here and dives down through there um, that's the new grain, there's a couple of points in the right in the stem but the grey colour that we're using is very very close to the grey colour of the moulding um, I actually could almost have got away with not painting it at all but it's um, at least we get it right the wooden decks will cover almost all of this deck and indeed almost all of this deck and now with the centre deck section I kicked the camera there would you believe for those of you who just got a wee jolt so let's start to peel this back one small section on this deck which has not been masked with tape and that's here where I've masked it with a masking fluid and you'll see there I hope where we go let's see if we can't get it to snap into focus there we go you will see there I hope the masking fluid which dries rubbery coming off and that really was because it was so difficult to put masking tape in this area that I decided to use masking fluid and it's a masking fluid that artists use um, from Windsor and Newton so I still need to get this off now I'm just checking up here if this thing will snap into focus which it doesn't seem to want to do to make sure the last of the fluid is out and I think it is Okay, right. A couple of things you can see from this. One is the difference in colours now quite clear between the moulding colour there, eh, sorry, the moulding colour there, and there, there, and there, and the spray, the final spray, which is that. That is the colour of the primer, and here we have the the colour of the finished grey and I see we've still got a bit of masking tape there let's see if we can get that up I'm 
head off. Okay, that's the, that's the primer colour, that's the colour of the, the moulded plastic and you'll just be able to see in the tops there the colour of the final grey that we've got on and on this side the final grey there and on the breakwater there. Again we've got black covering some of these bollards uh, so we need to be tidied up with a bit of masking tape in there yet, which we need to get off. And as in the other decks, we might come back later in our final touching up and just touch up that black. But there we have it. That is the decks, which now have got their final grey on them. What's to happen to these next, and I'm not going to do it in this, this section, is that we have some brass work to put on top of these boxes, or on top of these hatches. We have a set of brass uh, cleats to go on. I believe there's one about there and there, another one about there and there. A brass cover to go over that anchor chain point and we've got brass uh, we've got um, plastic capstans to go on and brass toppings on them so we're not going to do that yet we're going to uh, fit the decks to the hull glue them in before we do any brass work on them because it's far easier to work on a larger scale than it is to work on this scale. But some of these bits of brass will have to be primed, they'll have to be painted grey or black, and uh, we'll do that in a later episode. So, for just now, that's that. Well, that's us now completed part five, and we've completed the deck section uh, in part five. Um, the last part that we have to do will be applying the wooden decks by Artox. Um, and putting the deck into the hull and gluing it in there. That'll be the last part covering the deck work and uh, we'll, just, we'll leave now and uh, we'll see you ready for that one.